Hello there. When the first Star Wars prequel movie, The Phantom Menace, arrived in 1999, the Lucasfilm promotional team was in full overdrive. Full overdrive mode, you might say. Items from the movie could be found everywhere, from toys to bed sheets to toothpaste to food packaging. I mean, you could not hide from the fact that this movie was now in theaters or coming to theaters. This is episode 66, the Pepsi Soda Phantom Menace promotion. <laughs> Pepsi was not about to miss the opportunity to join on the Phantom Menace bandwagon. They came out with 24 collectible cans featuring various characters from the new movie. These cans were spread out over four of their soda products. There was Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, Mountain Dew, and Pepsi One. Let's take a look at this historical event. But before I do, I just want to remind you to take a moment to hit that like button, possibly leave a comment after you're done watching this, and of course, subscribe to the channel. We've been getting some nice subscriptions lately. It's great to see them climbing. Helps the YouTube algorithm find this channel more so that others can also join what I bought over the years. Ready to begin? All right, first, as you can see, we have a Pepsi can here. And I do have all 24 cans. They're not in the greatest shape anymore. They are kind of dinged up a little bit. But I have them. And uh, they are empty now. I did pop a little hole in the bottom here to drain them from pop. Because uh, for many years, I just kind of bought the cans, set them off to the side, and didn't drain them first. That was a mistake. I found out that the soda can get out of the cans once in a while without opening the cans. Made kind of a mess in my back room. So I decided to just pop a hole in the bottom, drain everything out, and that way I can store them away nicely for future reference. So, like I said, there's 24 of the cans. Each of the cans features the Star Wars Episode One logo on the front. The Phantom Menace is written in small print at the bottom of that. And if we turn the can around, it features one character and a little paragraph about what that character, who that character is. So we're gonna go through these quick, let you see what we've got here. And of course, can number one features Anakin Skywalker. As far as what it says about Anakin, caring and charismatic, this young slave finds that the key to unlocking his destiny is his own inner strength, but the path ahead is a clouded one. So, what do you think of the can? It's actually, I think, pretty well done as far as a promotional type can. But there is number one, Anakin Skywalker. So, who would be number two? Well, surprisingly, it's not Obi-Wan or Qui-Gon. No, number two is Sebulba. And what does it say about Sebulba? It says, the best pod racer on Tatooine. He is also the most feared. Victory for him is complete only when his opponents are destroyed. So Bulba made it to number two. Of course, if you remember the movie, these two got into uh, a scrap before the race and a bigger fight during the race. So, who made the number three cut? I'll give you just a moment to think about it. Did you guess that it would be Qui-Gon Jinn? Yep, Qui-Gon Jinn is number three. And about Qui-Gon, it says, A compassionate Jedi Master, he is highly attuned to the Force, but he shuns consensus and follows his own path, despite the consequences. So yes, this movie introduced us to one of the great Jedis of all time, Qui-Gon Jinn. Who's number four? Give you a moment to think. Ready? Watto! Yeah, I would not have placed Watto at number four. 
But he is. And what does it say about Watto? A pudgy blue Tidorian, Toy Dorian, he runs a junk shop and loves to bet on the pod races. But some days he is too shrewd for his own good. We found out that yeah, we found that out for sure during the movie, didn't we? Number five, I'll give you just a moment. I'll give you a, a, a hint. It is not one of the main characters. Number five is that gangster that we all love to hate, and that would be Jabba the Hutt. What does it say about Jabba? Enormous in size and ego, the combative Hutt is the host of the dangerous Bunta Eve pod races in Mas Espa. With him, greed is a powerful ally. So there's number five, Jabba. Number six, kind of an important person. Still not Obi-Wan, though. Number six is Senator Palpatine. Senator Palpatine, this Republic senator from Naboo, pays lip service to democracy, but instead practices the politics of deceit, manipulation, and control. A little bit of a key there to who this senator is going to become. Some people, when they went to see this movie, had no idea who he really was. Number seven. Well, we're finally getting one of the characters from the original trilogy, and that would be R2-D2. There are many astromech droids, but this brave R2 unit stands alone. Besides saving the Queen's ship, he comes to the aid of young Anakin in a desperate moment. That is true. That does happen. So, if R2 is number seven, who would be number eight? Well, it's not who you think. Nope, number eight is Darth Sidious, a dark lord of the Sith. Sidious is the true power behind the Trade Federation's quest. Mysterious, hidden, he is a force to be feared by all. That is very true. Now these are the eight cans from the Pepsi products. The next batch goes to one of the other sodas. So let's get these out of the way for a moment. The next one, we move on to Mountain Dew. And there are also eight cans from the Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. The first one, number nine in the series, is Darth Maul, who I think is one of the greatest villains in Star Wars. Unfortunately, he didn't get a whole lot of screen time. But about Darth Maul, it says, a faithful apprentice to the Sith Lord Darth Sidious, he serves the dark side of the Force and is unrelenting in his blood quest against the Jedi. So what do you think about Darth Maul? The next one is, okay, the next one is your favorite. Admit it, he is your favorite. If not, leave a comment and tell me he's not. But I know he is. Number 10 is Jar Jar Binks. Yes, he is. Told you he was your favorite. And it says about Jar Jar, an outcast from his society, this native Gungan's curiosity and roving tongue get him into constant trouble and lead him into many misadventures. So there you go, Jar Jar Binks. I thought he was kind of fun. He didn't bother me at all. I, he was a nice comic relief character the way I saw it. The next one is number 11. Still not Obi-Wan Kenobi. No, but we do have a Jedi Master by the name of Mace Windu. A member of the powerful Jedi Council, he is deeply concerned about a new disturbance in the Force. He senses darkness where others see only light. So yes, we get introduced to one of the most powerful Jedi alive at the time, Mace Windu. Number 12, okay, finally! Finally, we get to see Obi-Wan Kenobi. Only took 11 cans before we got to his can. Well, it says, as an apprentice, he is loyal and resourceful. Youthful courage, however, doesn't always bring intuitive wisdom for this headstrong Jedi. Headstrong Jedi. 
Would you say that about the older version of Obi-Wan? I'd say you could easily say that about the younger one. So who follows Obi-Wan? Well, of course, it would have to be Captain Panica. And about the captain, it says, head of Naboo's Royal Security Forces, he knows his small team cannot defend against a planetary assault and accompanies Queen Amidala on the dangerous mission to Coruscant. So there we have Captain Panaka. Next in line, 14. Well, we're getting to one of the, I guess you could say, bad guys. One of the guys being manipulated by Darth Sidious. And that would be Rune Hakoi. Or Hako? Rune Hako? I don't remember how to say his last name. However, what it does say on the can about him is, a lieutenant under Newt Gunray's command... Rune fears the power of the Jedi and their ability to put an end to the Trade Federation's invasion. So there we have it. Number 14 is Rune. Back to the good guys here with number 15, and it is Rick Oley. Yeah, he was the pilot on the Queen ship, if you recall. Piloting an unarmed spacecraft, Rick helps Queen Amidala and her small entourage escape Naboo during the Trade Federation invasion. We have one more from the Mountain Dew line. Our second droid, I believe. And no, it's not C-3PO. Nope, this one happens to be a destroyer droid. Armed with lasers, cannons, and defense shields, these droids roll into combat and then transform into terrifying fighting machines. I liked the destroyer droid. Very unique, very dangerous. So there are the eight cans from the Mountain Dew collection. Let's get them moved off to the side. The next one is Diet Pepsi. And who's the first one on Diet Pepsi or number 17 in the series? Well, that would be Queen Amidala. The beauty and grace of the newly elected Naboo ruler is matched only by her determination and fearlessness when danger confronts her people. Queen Amidala. What more do you need to say about her? They've got her pretty well covered in that explanation. Along with Queen Amidala, number 18 is Padme. Yeah, it was a little confusing at first when you first saw the movie who these two were. And about Padme, it says, This strong-willed handmaiden faces her own challenges, but entrusts not even the Jedi Knights with her deepest secret. And we do find out what that secret is. I'm not going to spoil it from you, for you. I'll let you find that out on your own when you watch the movie. Another one from the Diet Pepsi is Shmi Skywalker. That's right, Anakin's mother. Enslaved on Tatooine, Shmi helps her son Anakin follow his destiny, even though she may never see him again. And we all know what happens to Anakin, don't we? If you don't, you're probably not watching this video. The last one of the Diet Pepsis is the Battle Droid. A lot of those in the movie. Well, what does it say about the Battle Droid? Controlled by a remote source and distinguished by their vast numbers, these foot soldiers of the Trade Federation can overwhelm any enemy, but are vulnerable to the Jedi. So there is the last of the Diet Pepsis. Only four in that line, because the last four are from Pepsi One. And the first one in Pepsi One, or number 21 in the series, happens to be Chancellor Valorian. Well, it says, as the head of the Republic, his ideal is always to preserve peace, but his reign is threatened by the Trade Federation's scheming ways. We definitely find that out during the movie. It took us to number 22, to finally get to that other droid from the original trilogy that we have not seen yet. And that is C-3PO. Or to really state the fact, the unfinished C-3PO. What does it say? Constructed with spare parts and odd pieces of junk, this talkative protocol droid, even in an unfinished state, is always eager to please. How did you feel when you saw an unfinished C-3PO for the first time in The Phantom Menace. Caught me a little off guard. I wasn't quite ready for that. 
but I, I kind of got used to it pretty quick and then enjoyed it after that. Only two left. The next one, if you've noticed, we're missing one of the villains yet. Well, I guess you could say he was a villain. And that would be number 23 would be Newt Gunray. As a pawn to Darth Sidious, this Trade Federation Viceroy oversees the invasion of Naboo and is surprised at the power of resistance he meets. So there we have it, Newt Gunray. Only one can left in this series. Who would that last one be? Well, let me give you a hint. He is a leader of his people, if you want to call them people. They're not humans. That narrows it down quite a bit. So who is it? Well, it would be Boss Nass. Yeah, got to have a can with Boss Nass. He was one of the great characters from the movie. So what does it say about Boss? The protective leader of the Gungans, he agrees to help Queen Amidala fight the Trade Federation's invasion of Naboo. And with a little luck, do they succeed? Spoilers! Nah, I'm not going to tell you. If you haven't seen the movie, go out and watch it. Well, that finishes out the 24 cans of the Pepsi promotional series for The Phantom Menace. Now, a person in town here who owned the supermarket knew that I was collecting these cans. He gave me one extra little thing for these collection, and that would be this. It is... something to put the cans into for display, which I thought was kind of cool. I have never put them in this, but I believe I'm going to put them in after I'm done with this video. And uh, tell you what, at the end here, I'll take a picture and show you what it looks like. But of course, before I do that, I would like you to once again hit that like button. Let me know you enjoyed this video. Comment. Was there any characters you think should have had a can and didn't? And of course, subscribe to the channel. Let me know that you really like this channel and that I should keep making these videos. Until next time, may the force be with you and keep collecting.